a card game using 36 unique cards, four suits, diamonds, hearts, clubs, and spades, with cards numbered from one to nine in each suit. So there's four suits, each of them have nine cards, so that gives us 36 unique cards. A hand is a collection of nine cards, which can be sorted however the player chooses. So they're essentially telling us that order does not matter. What is the probability of getting all four of the ones. So they want to know the probability, the probability of all of getting all four of the ones. So all four ones in my hand of nine. Now this is kind of daunting at first. You're like, gee, you know, I have nine cards and I'm kicking them out of 36. I have to figure out how do I get all of the ones. But if we think about it just very, very, in very simple terms, all, all a probability is saying is the number of events, or I guess you could say the, the number of ways in which this, this action or this event happens. So this is what the definition of the probability is. It's going to be the number of ways in which event can happen can happen and when we talk about the event we're talking about having all four ones in my hand that's the event and all of these different ways that's sometimes called the event space but we actually want to count how many ways that if i get a hand of 9 picking from 36 that i can get at, that i can get the four ones in it so there's the number of ways in which my event can happen and we want to divide that we want to divide that into all of the possibilities, all of the, or maybe I should write it this way, the total number of hands that I can get. The total number of hands. So the numerator in blue is the number of hands where I have, or the, the number of different hands where I have, uh, at, where I have the four ones, and we're dividing it to divide the total number of hands. Now let's figure out the total number of hands first, because at some level this might be more intuitive, and we've actually done this before. Now the total number of hands we're picking nine cards, and we're picking them from a set of 36 unique cards, and we've done this many many times. So let me write this total number, total number of hands, or total number of possible hands. That's equal to, you can imagine you have nine cards to pick from. The first card you pick is going to be one of 36 cards. Then the next one's going to be one of 35. Then the next one's going to be one of 34, 33, 32, 31. We're going to do this nine times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So that would. That would be the total number of hands if order mattered. But we know, and we've gone over this before, that we don't care about the order. We All we care about the actual cards that are in there. So we're over counting here. We're over counting for all of the different rearrangements that these cards would have. It shouldn't. It doesn't matter whether whether uh, the, the ace of diamonds is the first card I pick or the last card I pick. The way I've counted them right now, we are counting those as two separate hands. But they aren't two separate hands, since so order doesn't matter. So what we have to do is we have to divide this we have to divide this by the w number of ways you can arrange nine things. So you could put nine of the things in the first position, then eight in the second, seven in the third, so forth and so on. It essentially becomes nine factorial times two times one. And we've seen this multiple times. This is essentially 36 choose nine. This expression right here is the same thing, just so you can relate it to the, the uh, I guess, combinatorics formulas that you might be familiar with. This is the same thing as. 36 factorial over 36 minus 9 factorial. That's what this orange part is over here. Divided by 9 factorial, or over 9 factorial. What's green is what's green, and what is orange is what's orange there. So that's the total number of hands. Now, a little bit more of a nuanced thought process is how do we figure out the number of ways in which the event can happen, in which we can get have all four ones. So let's figure that out. So number of ways, or maybe we should say this, number of hands with with four ones, with four ones. And just as a little bit of thought experiment, imagine if we were only taking four cards, if a hand only had four cards in it. Well, if a card only had four hands, if a hand only had four cards in it, then the only the number of ways to get a hand with four ones, there's only be there only be one way, one combination. You just have four ones. That's the only combination with four ones. If we were only picking four cards, 
But here, we're not only picking four cards. There's one, four of the cards are going to be are going to be ones. So four of the cards are going to be ones. I mean, one, two, three, four. But the other five cards are going to be different. So one, two, three, four, five. So for the other five cards, for the other five cards, if you imagine this slot, considering that of the 36, we've already we would have we we would have to pick four of them already in order for us to be have four ones. So there's another if there's well we've used up four of them, so there's 32 possible cards over in that position of the hand, and then there'd be 31 in that position of the hand, and then there'd be 30. Because every time we're picking a card, we're using it up. And now we only have 30 to pick from. Then we only have 20, 29 to pick from. And then we have 28 to pick from. And just like we did before, we don't care about order. We don't care if we find if we pick the five of clubs first or whether we pick the five of clubs last. So we shouldn't double count it. So we have to divide by the different number of ways that five cards can be arranged. So we have to divide this. We have to divide this by the different ways that five cards can be arranged. So the, the first card or the first position could be any one of five cards, then four cards, then three cards, then two cards, then one cards. So the number of hands with four ones is actually is actually just this number. You're actually looking at all of the different ways you can fill up the remaining cards. These four ones are just going to be four ones. There's only one way to get that. It's the remaining cards that's going to give all of the different combinations of having four ones. So this will be a count of all of the different combinations, because all of the different extra stuff that you have will be all of the different hands. Now, we know the total number of hands with four ones. It's this number. And now we can divide it by the total number of possible hands. And I didn't multiply them out on purpose so that we can cancel things out. So let's do that. Let's take this and divide by that. So let me just copy and paste it. So let me take that. Let me copy it and let me paste it. Let's take that and let's divide it by let's divide it by that. But dividing by a fraction is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So let's just multiply by the reciprocal. So let's multiply. So this is the denominator. Let's make this the numerator. So let me copy it and then let me paste it. So that's the numerator. And then that's the denominator up there, because we're dividing by that expression. So let me, let me have to, whoops. Let me put that there. Let me get the select tool. And then let me make sure I'm selecting all of the numbers. Let me copy it, and then let me paste that. It's a little messy with those lines there, but I think this will suit our purposes. This will suit our purposes just fine. So when we're multiplying by this, we're essentially dividing by this expression up here. Now, this we can simplify pretty easily. We have a, we have a, well actually I forgot to do, this is this should be 9 factorial. This should be 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So let me put that in both places. Actually, let me just, let me, let me clear that both places. Clear, don't want to confuse people. Clear. I'm sorry if that confused you when I wrote it earlier. This would be 9 factorial 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So let me copy and paste that now. Copy, and then you paste it. That's that right there. And then we have this in the numerator. We have 5 times 4 times 3 times 1 in the denominator. So this will cancel out with that part right over there. And then we have 32 times 31 times 30 times 29 times 28. That is going to cancel with that. That and that cancels out. So what we're left with is just this part over here. Let me rewrite it. So we're left with 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 over, over and this will just be an exercise in simplifying this expression, 36 times 35 times 34 times 33. And let's see. If we divide the numerator and denominator by 9, that becomes a 1. This becomes a 4. You can divide the numerator and denominator by 4. This becomes a 2. This becomes a 1. You divide numerator and denominator by 7. This becomes a 1. This becomes a 5. You can divide both by 2 again. And then this becomes a 1. This becomes a 17. And you can divide this and this by 3. This becomes a 2. And then this becomes an 11. So we're left with the probability 
of having all four ones in my hand of nine that I'm selecting from 36 unique cards is equal to, in the numerator I'm just left with this 2 times 1 times 1 times 1. So it's equal to 2 over 5 times 17 times 11. And that is, so I need a drum roll. This was a kind of an involved problem. 5 times 17 times 11 is equal to 935. So it's equal to 2 over 935. So about roughly 2 in a 1,000 chance, or 1 in a 500, roughly speaking, this is the exact odds, you have a roughly 1 in 500 chance of getting all four of the ones in your hand of nine when you're selecting from 36 unique cards.